This is a short analysis of Thomas Young's double slit experiment of 1801. So this is a time before quantum mechanics and before the duality nature of light, before Einstein, well before all that. At this time, there's a raging argument about light being a particle versus light being a wave. So Thomas Young has this idea. This is the pattern created when you drop a pebble in a pond. It creates these ripples in the pond. And if you create multiple pebbles, drop multiple pebbles, and you keep moving the place where you drop the pebbles farther and farther apart, an interference pattern begins to develop. And Thomas Young saw this and recognized this. And that probably gave him, probably, gave him the idea for his double slit experiment. So what he did was he took a thick piece of cardboard, essentially, and made two slits in it. He could take metal, anything that's opaque, and then far away he'll have a screen. Then he takes a coherent light source, such as today we'd use a laser, and shine it on here. And what he got was something interesting. He got that interference pattern caused by two pebbles being dropped in the pond. And as the pattern hits the shore, you see I have crests and troughs, and that's what he saw. So here he has evidence that light is behaving like a wave from his double slit experiment. Let's analyze this experiment a little bit more. So here it is from overhead, two slits and some screen, and it's going to be some large distance L apart from each other. L is going to be a lot bigger than D, where D is the distance between the two slits. So the coherent light source comes in, hits it, and the two slits come together, I mean the two beams of light come together in different spots on the screen, and that's the bright and the dark spots. Where two come together I can see, well, let's see, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's leave it at this, at the bright and the dark spots. And we're going to make an assumption in our analysis that the angles are going to be the same. In my diagram they're not because my screen's too close to the opening. If I make it scaled appropriately, you really can't see the details. So we'll just have to kind of have a little give and take with this one. The bottom ray, red ray, is going to travel farther than the top to get to the point on the screen on the right. So there's going to be a little path difference in them, and that's going to be this blue line here. And I can draw a triangle and a normal line. And when I do all that, I can look at it a little bit closer, and I can see that I can actually calculate the path difference. It's just going to be the hypotenuse and the angle and the opposite side, so that's going to be the sine function. The path difference is d sine theta. So d sine theta is equal to m lambda, where lambda is the wavelength, and then m is an integer. Whenever you're off by a wavelength, one wavelength, two wavelengths, three wavelengths, four wavelengths, etc., 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 the waves all match up and you get a bright spot. Now, we've also given these things an order number. See on the side on the blue where it says 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's just the M order, and that describes what we're looking at. And just like the maxima, we can also get minima. So d sine theta is equal to m plus a half, because we know when you're off by 180 degree phase shift, or half a wavelength, you get destructive interference. So we get a minima. So we just add a half to our equation, and we can find the minimas. So, as an aside, d sine theta is also equal to m c over f, because c over f, the speed, wave speed times, or divided by the frequency, is equal to the wavelength. Alright, so let's keep looking at what we have. Got the screen, got the order number, everything coming here. I have the central maximum, and the central maximum has to do with the intensity. So if I could look at the intensity of all these fringes, I can see that the central fringe is the brightest. So that's the greatest intensity, and that's the central maxima. So where m is equal to zero, that's going to be the brightest spot, the central maxima. Notice that the intensity, uh, the brightness, in other words, the brightness of each friend decreases as I move farther and farther away. All right, now let's look at this a little bit more. So along the central maxima, that's m equals zero, I can go to m equals one, and I have a certain vertical distance that they traveled. And when I do that, I know that the vertical distance from the center line is equal to m lambda l over a, or over D, I guess, really, um, and D being the distance between the two openings, A being the same thing in this case. So M is equal to 1, so it's for the first order from 0 to the first order. Note, too, that all these distances between all the, the uh, fringes are the same. So really, the distance between any two adjacent fringes is equal to lambda L over A. Between the second fringe, 0 and the second fringe, it's M lambda L over A, and between the third, it's m at lambda l over a, and that's equal to m equals 3, and then I can go up to m equals 4, and m equals 5. So the distance is always measured from the center line, and that's what that's trying to show.